Thank you, Lord. We want to teach you a very simple song. It's called To Know You More. There's, there's a desire for each and every one of us to know the Lord. The Bible says, blessed are those that hunger and thirst. As long as you have a hunger and thirst for Him, He's obviously going to feed you. Here's the word. Just one passion, one purpose, to know you more and more. When I know you, I'll find me. Say it again. Just one person, one purpose, to know you more and more. When I know you, I'll find me. Yeah, the chorus. No life outside you. Ha. No one besides you, Jesus. Let me know you more and more. When I know you, I'll find me just one passion. Just one passion. One purpose. Tell him to know you, to know you more and more. Cause when I know you, God, when I know you, I'll find Let it be your prayer today. One passion, tell him. Just one passion. Pray up to Jesus, work one purpose. purpose. I want to know you. One passion, just one passion. Cry out to Jesus, hey. one ah. to know you, Jesus, to know you more and more. Yeah. When I know you, God, I'll find me. No life, hey, Jesus, no one besides you. No. 
to be close to you just to be close to you ha huh. just to be he close to you is my desire i desire you jesus help me say just to be just, just to be Let it be your prayer today, God. Just I want to be close to be close to you. One thing that I desire. One thing Just that I be I long for. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord forever. It's my yes. theme for 2021 is seeing the kingdom and the message today is seeing victory seeing victory please say I see victory last week we talked about seeing faith everyone say seeing faith and the week before we talked about seeing transformation say seeing transformation so today we are dealing with seeing victory. I'm in 2 Samuel chapter number 23. This is the list of David's mighty men of valor, starting from verse 9. And after him was Eliezer, the son of Dodo, the Ohite, our Ohite, one of the three mighty men with David, not of David. None one of the three mighty men with David. There's a difference of be there's a difference being of and with. They were with David from the beginning. When they defied the Philistines that were gathered together to battle, and the men of Israel were gone away. He arose and smote the Philistines until his hand was weary, and he clave, uh, and his hand clave to the sword. And the Lord wrought a great victory that day. And the Lord wrought a great victory that day. Please say that. And the Lord wrought a great victory that day. Say it like you want to be victorious. And the people returned after him only to get money. They didn't want to help in the battle. Verse 11. After him was Shema, the son of Agitha, uh, Hararites, and the Philistines were gathered together into a troop where was a piece of ground full of lentils, and the people fled from the Philistines. But Shammah stood in the midst of the ground and defended it 
and slew the Philistines, and the Lord wrought a great victory. Please say that. Please say it with a little bit of conviction. First John 5 and verse 4. First John 5 verse 4. First John 5 verse 4. Very intriguing. He doesn't say, for whosoever is born of God. He doesn't say, for whosoever. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever, this doesn't say, for whosoever. Whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Father, add a blessing to this word in Jesus' name. When we're dealing with the subject of victory, uh, small victories add to lead to big victories. We have to be victorious with things that are little in private places so we can enjoy victory in large places. It's very difficult, very challenging to be a human being. It's more difficult, as you've often heard me say, that it's so difficult being a, an African woman on the continent. It's very difficult. And so for those that have achieved anything, if we have any sense, we'll give God the glory for it. There are many that prosper that don't know God and have enjoyed a material victory. But the victory they have not enjoyed is to overcome in areas of the world demonic struggle, demonic challenge. Many don't even know they have a challenge. Many of them don't know that it is needful and necessary to be born again. And so victory then is, in our case, surrendering your heart and your soul to the Lord Jesus Christ. And so we make the confession of faith and we make a declaration that Jesus is Lord of our lives. We confess with our mouth and we believe in our heart that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God. And so the, the whole agency of salvation and being a believer becomes an interesting one because Jesus died for all. And John 1, 29. Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. There's a difference between the sin of the world and the sins of mankind. Jesus died to remove the sin of the world, which was to succumb the sin of the world is rebellion. That's the sin of the world. Rebellion. The world rebelled against God. And Jesus came to remove the sin of the world. And the way he did that was the opposite of rebellion which is total and absolute submission. Submission. He rendered his body, his life, his will, his everything to the Father. And because he had submitted him, himself to the Father, wherefore God hath highly exalted him. 
A person should not be highly exalted if they've not totally submitted. And so we submit. And through submission, we gain elevation. That, that submission initially uh, is laying ourselves down. We lay our lives down. We lay our resources down for the greater good of someone else. And so uh, the older we get, the more we can have a testimony of various victories that God has given us in our lives. Our sharing with uh, the very able singers and psalmists that present to us today, that next year I will be celebrating 49 years in ministry. 49 years in ministry, which are seven, seven year Sabbaths. And can you imagine what's going to happen in my 50th year of ministry? I shall meet you there. Let's go to First Chronicles chapter number 29 and verse 11. A victory is seen. What we pray in private, God brings public. What we do in private, God brings to a public platform. And so the writer of uh, the writer of Chronicles is possibly Samuel, neither here nor there, is quoting the words here of the great king. Thine, O Lord, is the greatness. Thine, O Lord, is the power. Thine, O Lord, is the glory. Thine, O Lord, is the victory. Everyone say the victory. Say the victory. Thine, O Lord, is the majesty for all that is in the heaven. All that is in the earth is yours. Thine, yours is the kingdom, O Lord. And you are exalted as head over all. Verse 12. Both riches and honor come of you. They go together. And so when you show honor and you give honor, you attract riches. And you reign over all. That's what they sang. He reigns over all the earth. And in you, in your hands, in your being, is power and might. So God joined together riches and honor. God joined together power and might. And in your hand, you have the ability and you have the willingness to make great. <laughs> oh, yes. And to give strength to all. Say, Lord, give me strength. Say, Lord, give me strength. And so this individual that wrote that or said that is the great king based on his experience. Thine, O Lord, is the greatness. Not greatness. There's a difference between greatness and the greatness. And so if you are praying that God will make you great, he will. But, as I've said many, many times on this platform and other places, Spider-Man 1 teaches us a great truth. With great power comes great responsibility. The word responsibility is made of two words. Responding to your ability. And so when God gives you great power, you have to respond to your ability in a, in a significant way. And then we go to verse 12 of First Chronicles 29. Both riches and honor. Say riches and honor. What God has joined together, let not man put asunder. And so God put together riches and honor 
They come of you, not from you. They come of you. So the more you get of God, the more you get of riches and of honor. The, the greatest ministries I know in the world and have met so many, they have riches, but what has got them there is honor. And you reign over all. Of course, you guys didn't know this was my message. And the song you sang, or will sing, you reign over all. Did you sing that already? You did. He reigns over all. And in, uh, in you, in you, in you, is power and might. Power and might. Power and might. And in your hand is the ability to make great. If you want to pray this prayer, you can say, Lord, make me great. And he will. He will. And you give strength to all. So when we're dealing with seeing the victory, uh, victory means that you have been in a fight. You can't get a victory without a fight. And so as you all know, I'm a Liverpool supporter. And for us, a victory is fourth place. And when we got that fourth place, we were jumping and shouting and screaming. And I'm so glad Manchester United lost. Because they are the same as us. They won nothing. <laughs> and so they won. We won, but we won nothing. But it's a victory. And for us as Liverpool supporters, a victory is fourth. How can you celebrate coming forth? But it's an achievement. I was watching uh, the football game yesterday and uh, Brentwood qualified to come into the Premier League after how many attempts for so many years and the fact that they just qualified, qualified is a huge financial gain of over $150 million. And so many of those players, the whole team, is now in the window. And for them, after so many attempts of trying to get into the Premier League, which is uh, for American soccer, in trying to get into the Premier League, after so many attempts, they finally succeeded. And it's a victory for them. But you have to see the victory. You can't go into a fight knowing you are going to lose. And so uh, I was watching a certain uh, movie some years ago of a certain fighter in a box. He was a street fighter, got into the boxing world, uh, which was basically street fighting. And uh, he was winning. And then the guy that actually brought him into that world said to him, you've got to throw the fight because the two guys that had never lost are now going to fight and you have to throw the fight. And he refused to throw the fight. In other words, there are uh, victories that allegedly are fixed. And if there's any fixing that's taking place, it's because God will have fixed it. But... For you as an individual, you have to see the victory. In the middle of, of despair and challenge and trial, you have to see the victory. Jesus didn't go to the cross defeated. He went to the cross knowing three days from now I will get out of the grave. He testified that so many times. Except a grain of wheat fall to the ground and die, it abideth alone. So he was willing to sow his life so that we, as many as received him, could become the sons of God. 
and we celebrate our victory through his victory. And so I want to go now to uh, Romans chapter number 8. Let's pick up verse 15. Find that for me. Romans chapter 8 and verse number 15. He's talking about overcoming here and overcoming sin. And uh, for you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. And so we don't walk after fear. We don't walk after uh, the elements and condiments of the world. Let's go to the next verse. Please keep that going for me. For the Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Verse 17. And if children heirs and heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if so, be that we suffer with him. Last verse. Uh, that we may be also glorified together. And so what we're saying here, that, that we, we suffer with Christ so that we can be glorified with Christ. And so the writer then declares that sin will not have dominion over us. Nothing will have dominion over us. There was a man in the 80s that had a, a, a serious struggle with cigarettes, smoking cigarettes. And he was taught when we started teaching faith and confessing with your mouth, he was taught that uh, you have to say to the cigarette, you will not have dominion over me because nothing will have dominion over me. The only uh, uh, entity that will have dominion over me is Almighty God. We submit ourselves to leadership structures, uh, whether it's government or whether it's church. We submit ourselves to family structures. But there's no human being that has to have the kind of dominion over you where you ha don't have a say, you don't have a right, you can't uh, move into a place where your gift is, is used and magnified. And so on a daily basis, I say poverty will not have dominion over me. Sin will not have dominion over me. The works of the flesh will not have dominion over me. My appetites, whatever they are, whether it's hunger, uh, thirst, food, uh, sexual pleasure, those will not have dominion over me. What must have dominion over me is God and he alone. Because if we lean towards the flesh, we will self-destruct. And so we, 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 we declare, we declare, and we state non-categorically that uh, we submit willingly to Almighty God and that no simple thing will have dominion over us. And so I was singing a hymn in my prayer yesterday morning, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. And so we sing that we have victory in Jesus. Ty Tribbett saying, we've got the victory. I've got the victory, the victory, the victory. And it's more than a song. It's about an experience. It's about overcoming. It's about going from one battle to the next. And so Psalm 98 and verse 1, sing unto the Lord. Sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord for he has done marvelous things. Sing unto the Lord because his right hand, uh, his right hand and his holy arm hath gotten him the victory. And so we have victory through Almighty God. We have victory through his word. We have victory through the blood of the Lamb. We are overcomers because of those things. Shout, I have the victory. And so we have then victory through judgment. We now in Matthew 12 and verse 20. Matthew 12 and verse 20. A bruised reed shall he not break, and a smoking flax he will not quench, till he sends forth judgment 
to victory. And so every one of us, we are like a reed. We're like a reed. I remember when we were, uh, I was putting in a fish pond in our backyard. And uh, it was just like, uh, it's a big kind of a pond. And uh, we needed some reeds in there to breathe some life into the little tilapia we had bought. And so along the main road going to Rua, there's a place where there's water constantly. And so I went with uh, our gardener and we dug out some reeds. And uh, while we were doing that, uh, we bruised one of the reeds, put a mark on the reed. And so every one of us, we are like a reed. We have been bruised by life. A, a, a bruise is not like a cut. A bruise is internal bleeding, where the bleeding doesn't come out. It's inside. And many in this room, many listening to this message, you have huge bruises because of life. Bruised because of betrayal. Bruised because of disappointment. Bruised because your hope is, is not being fulfilled. Your dreams are not being met. Your vision is struggling to come into fulfillment. But a breeze root he will not break. No matter how much pressure you are under in the floods, the flood will not break you. The storm will not break you. Best of all, you will be bruised. You will be bruised. But in the bruising, God will not forsake you. A smoking flax is where there's a little bit of a spark and uh, where, where you blow into the fire. And uh, you take a little bit of grass, maybe some paper, and you may not have a match. When I was a scout way back then, for seven days they gave us five matches. Five matches. And you have to somehow survive. And there were all these things where you rub sticks and you make a fire and all of that, or you use a magnifying glass and so on. The, the object is that you can't depend on, on a match strike to solve your problems. You have to go through the process. And, and, and sometimes when there's just a small uh, spark, you have to like blow. And you have to get very close and blow. And there are people that still do that today, where, where you have to get the fire going, where you have to blow in to get your testimony revived, blow in to get your life, your, your marriage, your family. You're struggling because there's so many you are supporting as an individual. And you are the sole survivor of the COVID challenge, the sole survivor. And you were almost on the place of death. Uh, Cisco, uh, who is at the church in uh, Cisco and Mary, they're at the church with, where's Webster again? Glenview. Come on, Janashi, you have to help me because we have to edit this out. Anyway, uh, we got a message that, said that Cisco had passed away and we were totally distraught. And uh, Cisco then told me, he told me when, because uh, I phoned Jermaine Ferreira and said, Cisco has passed away. And he was, oh, no, my goodness. And Jermaine was having a meltdown. And uh, we then discovered that it wasn't Cisco from the church uh, again. Yeah, Eastview. Eastview, yes, yes, Eastview. Please make sure you edit that properly. Uh, and we learned that the Cisco that had passed away was the one that was cutting hair. And it's not that we don't like the Cisco that was cutting hair. It's just that I thought about Cisco because of the small kids they had, the way they were serving us when we did the conference there. And then he told me, he said, you know what, Bishop? He said I was supposed to be dead. He said I had COVID. I was in the hospital at Wilkins. Uh, no, at Beatrice. And he said, I went into a coma. He said, when I came out of the coma, he said, the people said to me there, you are so blessed. 
Because of all the people that were there, you were the only one that survived. The only one. So what is it about this young man? God was, is blowing on the, on the little spark. <sighs> blowing on his life. And I said to him, you know what? You have to be so much more responsible with the things that God has given you. God has given you the victory and you have to see the victory. There is a purpose why you are still here in the midst of so many that have passed away and died. We are still in a quandary and in total confusion as to the reason why a young man like Andrew Bernard had to die. Why? Of whatever reason. And, and there's a reason why you are still here. Turn to your neighbor and say, there's a reason. Virginia, there's a reason you are still here. There's a reason. But you have to see that. You have to focus on that. You have to purpose in your mind that it is there. There, there are many, many little victories coming into great victories. And so the battle is not yours, it's the Lord's. The fact that you are a survivor out of slavery, the fact that you are a survivor out of the wilderness, uh, the fact that you were a survivor after being chased around for so many years by King Saul, the fact that you are a, a survivor of uh, gross neglect and rejection means that there's something significant and special coming in your life. Please say, I have to see the victory. Say that again, I have to see the victory. And so we sing victory in Jesus. We sing victory by the blood of Jesus. We sing victory in the, uh, in the backdrop of insurmountable odds. We see victory where there's no vote of confidence on our life. We see victory when the, the, the deck is stacked against us. We see victory when it's unlikely that we, we should prosper and succeed. But we see that victory. We see it significantly and we thank God for it. And so uh, in my closing here, I want to go back to the scripture we read in 1 Samuel 23 and verse number 9. Eliezer, the son of Dodo the Ahoyt, one of, uh, one of three mighty men with David. Everyone say, I'm with you. Turn to your name and say, I'm with you. I mean, consider who the person is before you say you are with them. Because you might have to inherit some of their debt. And you might have to inherit some of their generational curses which they've not taken care of. If you are comfortable, say to a neighbor, I'm with you. Uh, being with somebody, we need, firstly, we need moral support. Just support me. I'm not asking you to give me anything. Just support me. Uh, if you can't say anything good about me, don't say anything at all. Just, just support me. Support me with, number one, with your prayers. You can't say to a person next to you, say, I'm praying for you. You can't say to a person next to you, say, I'm praying for you. Say to a person next to you, I'm praying for you. But, but how are you going to say to the person, I'm praying for you, you don't know their name? So ask the person next to you if you, if you are comfortable and if you are willing to give it, say, what's your name? Single guys, don't get, girls, don't get a name from that single guy. <laughs> so, so support me morally. Just support me. Stand with me. Even if you don't understand me, just support me. Uh, support my, my vision. If you don't agree with me and so on, support me. And, and be careful how you put your hand on somebody's, uh, on somebody's neck. Because at some point, they could be your boss. I remember at, at International Conference Center one Sunday, I asked for individuals that they believed in their lifetime they would employ as many as 10,000 people. I was quite shocked as to the kind of people that came through. There was one person that I saw there. In my mind, I was thinking, you know, this is like pengaism. And I got a little check in my spirit to say, be careful what you say. Because... <laughs> God will raise up the most obscure person and you will, in my case, you will just criticize somebody that next week they'll get a major breakthrough and they'll remember what I'd said in the service. 
And so we just released the blessing. And my blessing was, you shall employ more than 10,000 people. You shall expand in your world and in your glory. And in this message, uh, you will experience victory, but you have to see the victory. I, I pray that God will open your eyes to see the victory. And you have to be with David. You have to be with him. You have to be with me. You have to be with Pastor Chichi. You have to be with our Kingdom Cathedral program. And the Bible says in verse 10, he arose and smote the Philistines until his hand was weary and his hand clave unto the sword. And the Lord wrought a great victory. Say that. And the Lord wrought a great victory. Say, Lord, work victory in my life. It's, it's only up to God now. It's only up to him to bring victory. It's only in God that he'll bring a victory on that day. And you will be so surprised that the people that will come and eat that have not earned the victory, they will come and take from you and they have not helped you prepare, they have not helped you cook, they have not helped you sit at the table, they have not helped you get the water for washing hands, uh, they have they've not helped you at all. But it's amazing that, that you are the one that's cooked, you are the ones that prepared but they are sitting there already before you even get there. And uh, you, you see their behavior at a buffet. Uh, they'll put everything on the plate. Salad, cornflakes, meat, chicken, riva, all the, they'll put it all in one plate. And, and it's like there's no food tomorrow. And they haven't paid anything. It's only a $5 cost. We have given them a dispensation to come in, but they are first in the line. And then uh, some of them will put it in their handbag for whatever reason. Maybe there's people at home that haven't eaten, you know. But again, they were not there in part of you blowing there. <sighs> Your eyes are red. You have not been sleeping. You're sleeping one hour, one and a half hours. You've been interceding and praying for your own need. But they become beneficiaries of your intercession. The breakthrough that they get is because God is depending on you to pray that people in your family, people in your circle can get the breakthrough. And isn't it amazing that God will honor those people, uh, he'll bless them and honor your prayer. And, and the reason he has not given you the breakthrough is not because God doesn't want to give you the breakthrough. He needs you in struggle because he needs your intercession. And so on Friday when Bernstein came, after his uh, uh, procedure, I was standing at the door and uh, I was asking Pastor Chichi, I said, where, uh, where are you? And so on. And then I saw our worker going there. Denford is a very strong man. He lifted up Bernie and was carrying him. Bernie was out of it. And again, our heart was being crushed and squeezed and under pressure. And again, in my intercession from April until now, it's that child, that man, that has caused Chichi and I to be in constant prayer. I would hate to think what level of prayer we would be in if we didn't have the kind of struggle and challenge. My mom fasted and prayed every week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, for years for my sister Marion, who had a, 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 an impediment. And even after Marion died on the uh, 30, 30th of, 28th of September, way back in 1981, she burnt with fire. Uh, the, the pain on my mom, something in my mom died that day. A light went out. But my mom didn't cease to pray and fast because of all the family members. For me and for the rest of them, didn't cease to pray. And so usually the impediment is there so that you can be on your knees to pray because God needs that intercession. And uh, it's not like God needs anything. But, but the intercession, as you understand me saying, is to liberate the nations, is to liberate, to bring an end to areas of struggle. So people can come into enlightenment, to, to break the yoke of the enemy. Prayer is a very important part of what we do and why we do it. And, and it's, it's important that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Because that prayer then brings us into a place where when we are in the battle, when we are in the heat of the struggle, when we are fighting for survival, 
when we are trying to get breakthrough, when we are attempting to work through the grace of God and the blessing of God, that will overcome the enemy, even our flesh. And so the Philistines there uh, were, were standing with their garrisons, with their armies against the king, against Israel. But one man, a standalone person, came with a sword in his hand. And the Bible says, as he was swinging his sword, his hand was exhausted and tired. But the Lord wrought a great victory. It was God that brought a great victory. There was something inherent in that man where instinctively he just kept on swinging, just kept on praying, just kept on believing, just kept on giving, just kept on discipline with the education program, kept on investing in, in, the, uh, in the future. And you have to be of resolve where you are determined in your life, determined in your spirit that you are not going to be moved. You will be Psalm 1, like the tree, planted, established by the rivers of water. You shall not be moved. Psalm 1, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. And the scripture is very important because if, if, you, if, you, <laughs> if you walk in the, the steps of the ungodly, you'll be comfortable in sitting in a certain place. But I like verse 3. That person shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. God is about to plant you and establish you. Your, your, your tree will grow. Your leaf will not wither. And your fruit shall abide forever. You will bring forth your fruit in your season. See, here it comes again. Here comes your fruit. Here comes your fruit. Here it comes again. And uh, of course... Uh, the best day of my life is coming up on June the 22nd because the people in the north, all those Vikings, they have to give back the sun to where it actually belongs into the southern hemisphere of Africa. And so uh, uh, my season now is going to open. The first one is going to be the mimosa flower and the next one is going to be the jacaranda flower. That's so soon. And then after that, uh, the other different plants are coming. Yesterday I bought African daisies, daisies for our yard. Those African daisies only come up in this season. But in the month of December, uh, other different flowers that are seasonal come up. And so now the victory is coming in your season. It's the season to build, Ecclesiastics. It's the season to gain. It's the season of life. We've gone through a season of death, a time to die, but it's now a time to live, a time to lose money, a time to gain money, a time to build a house, a time to buy a house, a time to drive a car, a time when accidents are, are suspended, a time when there's a ceasefire. There's a ceasefire, and it's a time where we build and we grow. It's a time of peace. It's not a time of war. It's a time of prosperity. It's not a time of losing. It's a time when thirst is quenched and we're not struggling for thirst. It's a time where we are ended with gathering two sticks and, and cooking one meal, but the prophetic anointing is coming to our house. It's a time for twins. It's a season for baby boys. It's a season for elevation. It's a season for the magnificence of Christ. It's a season where souls are going to be saved. It's a season when souls are coming in. Salvation is coming to your family. Salvation is coming to your neighborhood. It's a season where Obedidims are identified and, identified and raised up. It's a season where you will fight the Philistines and destroy them. It's a season where Saul anointing is put away, but Davids are being raised up. It's a season for Ethans and Solomons where wisdom, the principal thing, is coming. It's a season where hate is taken away, but love is coming up. It's a season, and brothers, where all the isms are being pushed aside, but the blessing of God is coming in your life. Say, I see the victory. Shout, I see the victory. We're about to celebrate the dedication of Eden and Idris. We are going to give them away. I said to Eden yesterday, I said, Eden, this is the first time I'm giving you away. The next time I give you away is to some man that's coming. He's going to be crawling one kilometer, coming to pay Lobola. I said, that's the only time I'm giving you away again. Oh, yes, but I'm praying for their blessing and their victory. 
I pray every day for the victory in their life. I pray for the victory in your life. But you have to see it. Shava, you have to see it. In the world where the, the market is flooded with the things that you do, you have to see the victory. When I heard and saw the announcement on the BBC that one of our own, Strive Masasiwa, has become a billionaire officially. I was celebrating with him and Tsitsi and giving God the glory because I said within myself, if God could do it for one of our own, I'm getting in the jet stream and I'm also believing that if one of our own could do it in the midst of so much trial and adversity, it brought me to remembrance when I was in Nigeria one time and I was going to board my flight. Strive came in and he said, oh, Bishop, it's good to see you. He said, can you please come with me and pray? And we, we prayed for a while. They were waiting for us to board the flight. And I can surely tell you that the many prayers they have prayed have brought victories in their lives. And you shall receive the victory. See the victory. Claim the victory. Confess the victory. Give to the victory. Amen. Get agreements for victory. I declare victory in Jesus, my Savior forever, by the blood of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Victory is coming. Victory. Victory. I got the victory. I got the victory. I got the victory. I got the victory. God has wrought a great victory in my life. Let me preach this out of me. It's my last service here for a while. Let me preach it out of me. I got the victory. I'm climbing higher. I'm going beyond Kilimanjaro. I'm going to Everest. I'm going deeper. I'm going deeper. I'm going wider. I'm going broader. I'm going in wisdom, in revelation, and in love.